If you think all sloths are slow, then you clearly haven't seen or played Driftwood. Driftwood sees you playing as a long boarding sloth, making its way down various different downhill obstacle courses and slaloming through roads, seeing if you can get the quickest type, the online leaderboards, or hitting the highest score. It's important, before I go any further, to caveat some of this game though, because it's a two-person development team, and they focused on making a very minimalistic experience focus purely on feel rather than everything else that's going on around it. So there is no open world, there is no deep in-depth trick system. There's a few tricks here and there but it's largely as a consequence of you drifting more than anything else. And what this game Driftwood is all about is setting up a flow state of being able to longboard or skateboard down these roads. So what do I mean when I talk about flow state? in terms of driftwood. Well, at the beginning of each run, you'll pick wheels and a longboard for your sloth that determines the top speed and grip levels that you've got available. And then you'll kick off and then you can move left and right to turn, press up to turn yourself into an aerodynamic sloth to gain speed as you go downhill. And if you need to air brake, you press back on the left analog stick and your arms poke out like a little da da man as you're going along, which is quite cute. Alongside that, you've got left and right trigger buttons to trigger a left and right drift. And what you'll be doing is using the combination of the drifting and the turning and being able to air brake or go forward to control your speed to lazily chain drifts of things as you go around different corners. However, to keep that combo going, what you'll also need to do is drive or skate close to oncoming vehicles or barriers so that you get close call points. And then you'll also have leaves in the road that you want to drive through to kick up in the wind. And those are often the things that you chain up between cars and corners to keep a combo going for as long as possible. That's what I mean by flow state, because you're just looking for the next thing to keep your combo chain going, whilst also keeping at speed. And what's really difficult to describe with Driftwood, but you probably can see it graphically as you're watching the gameplay, is that your turning circle is quite slothy. And I was thinking about this before recording, and I kind of came up with the, it's like sliding jelly off a spoon as an analogy for how this works, because it's sticky, but it kind of just flollops out when you tip it over the edge. And that's exactly how driving in driftwood feels because you can be really casual and lazy as you go around really long looping hairpin bends but when it comes to much tighter loops you can scrub off the speed and go right in and oversteer into the corner and hit a ballard in the middle but if you're just slightly too fast you will just understeer clean off into a barrier and go flying and seeing your poor little sloppy friend proper ragdoll it down the course is quite funny as it goes into black and white like proper wasted vibes going on um but you can get quite quickly up to speed with feeling do you know what this feels fantastic and fast and fluid whilst also quite lazy and chill at the same time it's a difficult cross section and cross hairs to land but driftwood totally nails that the other thing it really nails is that despite you only having four courses, there's loads of different ways to get down that course. So you'll have the main road to go down, but then there's loads of off-track shoots, which will often be covered in leaves, which make up for good combos, but then they'll often have tighter corners, for example. Or some will be on wooden tracks that go up almost like a a banked curve which are really difficult to get right. Another one sees you going off into a vineyard, another one sees you riding in and out through castles, which you can totally ignore and just have as a backdrop that you're driving by if you stay on the roads. And sometimes it's better to stay on the roads because you're thinking, right, I can chain up safer combos this way. But if you're looking for faster times, shortcuts, or maybe gathering so much momentum that you can then hit some corners faster by taking an, a shortcut or an off cut, like an off track route. It's about understanding what's the best way for you to try and get around things. And despite only having four tracks, there's plenty of replayability here in Driftwood. That said, I did run into a couple of issues that are probably specific to me and the main one is I couldn't play Driftwood for a long period of time because it made me feel motion sick. This is because of how jagged the movement is on the camera that sits right behind the sloth and whilst you can move it around slightly with the right analogue stick, 
I was finding that when I was having to slalom left and right and really pick my like constant drifting from one corner to another it did start to make me sweat and feel queasy and so after 20 minutes I would have to stop now thankfully that's still like five or six good runs um, and then looking at the online leaderboards and seeing where I'm stacking up for the daily challenge or just where I'm stacking in terms of times and scores on each of the different um, tracks that we've got but I didn't expect to feel quite so motion sick so quickly on a game where I'm playing as a sloth going down a long boarding track. <laughs> so I think that's just a word to be wary of for anyone else that gets motion sickness in games. I'm much better at it now that I'm nearly 40, Jesus Christ. But um, games still occasionally catch me out and this is certainly one of them. The other thing I think is just worthwhile mentioning is that this is really minimalistic. Like, there's a few challenges that you can have for each mode, like trying to reach a certain speed, or getting down without crashing, or making a certain amount of cars honk their horn. That all kind of is fine to get some unlocked cosmetics, but what this game really needs throughout early access, really for me, the physics of this game is absolutely great, and pretty much like 95% complete and done. It needs more tracks and content from that perspective to make things more replayable because after half an hour I'd seen everything quote unquote and it was more about that drive to improve my own scores and my own times and a daily challenge and I think that could wear quite thin quite quickly with its current four track limit at the moment. The last thing I wanted to talk about though which is much more of a positive is the soundtrack. It's got a lo-fi beats to chill, like seriously horizontal hip hop going on here. And it works so, so well with the vibe of the game, the low poly aesthetic, the speed, but laziness of the actions that are taking place. And the fact that when you like crash, it all kind of down. It just, it hits a vibe that really works. And so hats off for Driftwood for doing that. So yeah, I think this is a really positive start. I do think it needs more content to come in during the early access period, and I'm sure that that will happen. And yeah, a pleasant little surprise for those of you that enjoy a minimalistic skating experience. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.